Man, you know, it's too bad I don't have one of those zombie outfits for the show today. Hey there, everybody. Good morning. This is, my name is <laughs> Tom Rigsby, your host this morning. Seven minutes in the morning. Sans the zombie out, outfit, outfit. Oh, I can't speak right this morning. I must need more of this. No, that's not it yet. Uh, there we go. That's better. All right. Feeling better. Hey, thank you for joining me this morning. If you would do me the great favor, as Joe has already done, drop your name. Just say hi. Leave me a comment down there. Let me know that you were here. That does two great things for us. One's it's it is encouraging to me, which we will talk more about in just a minute. And number two sets you up to stay connected to the conversation that develops after the show is over. So, uh, I, I was sitting here before I got started this morning thinking, man, I, I need a good title for this morning. I need a good title. And, uh, something about contagious, um, uh, clicked in there and then everything just kind of fell in place so you know i was talking just a minute ago about being um being encouraging so all week this week we've been talking about language the language you use and the effect that it has on your efforts to achieve success to achieve the outcomes that you're pursuing or to prevent you from achieving those outcomes and in fact, that's the way, most of the time, that's the way that it manifests in our lives. The language that we're using creates obstacles or roadblocks that either slow us down or just prevent us completely from being able to achieve the things that we want to achieve. And so we've talked about identifying that, some of the subtle sabotage that goes on uh, based on the language that we use. And then we talked about some ways to overcome that. So... If you're just joining me today for this uh, series that we've been running all week, go back and watch them from Monday. They're all pretty good. At least the content's pretty good. I hear the host can be kind of, I don't know, flighty sometimes. But today I want to talk to you about it being contagious. You know, and, and I, I really, what I really want you to see and this from this topic all week, what I really want you to take away is that the words that we use matter. You know, I had, a, as a lot of you know, I used to have a, a business. We help lawyers um, as they put their case on in court. So I had to be in a bunch of courtrooms and watch a bunch of trials. And one of the lawyers one time got on this witness and he was like, well, Mr. Smith, do you agree that this, that that collection of letters is a word? And it's a word in the English language, and words have meaning. Well, what's the meaning of that word? I mean, he was just really on a tear, right? But the words that we use and the words that we choose to use have an impact on, uh, on us and the way that we look at our meaning. But it's not just us. That outlook can be contagious. You know, I've encouraged you many times. Begin your day with gratitude. Start the day with gratitude. Write down in your journal that I know all of you keep, right? Write down what you're grateful for. And sometimes it's hard. I mean, sometimes you got to really think, well, I talked about that yesterday. I, you know, I've, I'm saying this all the time. I need to be grateful for something else. And that's okay. It, it's the purpose of doing it is to help you identify and see the bounty, see the, the, the abundance that is right here in front of us. And I really believe that if you do that, if you begin every day from a position of gratitude, it is impossible for you to be selfish and be grateful at the same time. So you begin the day exuding gratitude. That's an outward-facing act, an outward-facing emotion. Then as you're walking around through the day and somebody says, Hey, Tom, how you doing? It's like, man, I'm doing fantastic. And I realized... Well, the, the point I want to make today about it being contagious, one day when I said that, just walking down the hall in the office, hey, Tom, how you doing? Man, I am fantastic. And the response I got back surprised me. I mean, it's very, you know, people say, oh, that's great. Oh, that's good. Yeah, me too. 
the response I got back on this day was, do you ever have a bad day? And I thought about that. I, I mean, obviously, it's been years ago. Maybe a year ago. At any rate, I'm still thinking about it. That's how impactful that response was to me. But the thought was, or, or, you know, kind of where that led me to think was, do I ever have a bad day? Of course I have bad days. But I'm pretty intentional about saying I'm doing great because I could be so much worse. In fact, I, you know, kind of playfully now, I say, you know, I say, how you doing? Well, I'm upright and walking around, so that's a great day, right? Because we could not be upright and walking around. Maybe that's all you have to be grateful for today, but that's a pretty good thing to be grateful for. Right? So begin your day with gratitude. Then it sets you up so you're not really, you know, doing the fake it till you make it on having a great day. I really am having a great day. Because with everything else that's going on, could it be bad? Yeah, sure. Maybe even sometimes I let those things take over. But if I can remind myself you know, to be grateful, then I can get back to the, I'm doing great. And when you do that, so the other thing that I learned from this response was that other people are paying attention. Because the reason I got that response back is because, you know, I'd run into that person quite often, and I'd always have, I'm, I'm peachy, I'm great, I'm awesome, I'm fantastic. You know, I try to mix them up a little bit. So it's not boring and not coming across the road. But they were paying attention. They knew that I said that all the time. And it clicked with them. It was resonating with them. And whether they believed they were having a fantastic day or not, they were getting a message that it is possible to have a fantastic day every day. Maybe that left them wanting, wanting to know more. Why, how, well, how do you do that? And that opens the opportunity for you to talk and share with them about how um, those things are working for you. So don't think that other people are not paying attention. They might not act on it, but they're watching you. They're paying attention, and your positivity can be contagious. It should be contagious. Try to infect as many people as possible. Let's check the comments, because I can see a couple of them rolling down there. He says we need to be positive and grateful. No time to put ourselves down. Although it is, it is easy to do. Yeah, oh, absolutely. It, it's super easy to do because, it, you know, especially, well, you know, I'm upright walking around today. And, you know, like yesterday, almost, I think it was yesterday, most of the day I carried around this cramp in my calf. Well, man, I can't get that to go away. What's the deal? Right? And so every time I take the step, I had an opportunity to go right back to, Oh man, this is terrible. Right? I mean, it's, those opportunities present themselves. We don't need to let them overtake that. So, so have some tactics. And you have to practice so that this becomes, it's almost like muscle memory for your mind, right? But you have to practice in order to have this. Right? And so when you, when you feel yourself slipping into that, um, that play, that, what would you call it? Uh, put yourselves down. When, when you're feeling in, when you feel, feel yourself, ah, hang on. Yeah, that's better. When you feel yourself slipping into this down place, let that trigger a, a an opposite response. Yep, got a cramp in my leg, but I'm, I'm walking around. Or, yep, walk it out, whatever, right? Have some tactics in your mind to help trigger that uh, response. All right, Joe says, viral influence is the underlying purpose of social media. Great poster makes the message about the audience with an insightful piece of wisdom. Oh, I might be, I might do that every once in a while. <laughs> no, that's, uh, that, you're right, Joe. And, you know, here's the thing about social media, and we get stuck on this all the time. About, especially when we're trying to market, right? I've got to have social media tactics. It's not new. 
We've been doing social media for hundreds of years. It's just before it was called talking and gossip. Now we're just, when we have an electronic means, we have a bigger megaphone. We can yell at more people at the same time. That's all. But the, but the challenge comes in that so many people are yelling. How do you rise above the noise? Boy, that might be a good topic for next week. How do you rise above the noise when so many people are yelling? Might even be a good topic for the mob today. Great thoughts from the leaders in the biz, biz, business community, says Joe. The mob, that's correct. Thank you for reminding me about that, Joe. I always forget that one. So it is the first Friday of the month. If you happen to be in the Huntsville area around lunchtime and you are male, then you can come to the Men of Business meeting at Terra Nova's uh, Panorama. I think that's Panorama, Paramore, something like that. It's off the University Drive. If you want directions or more information, just send me a message. I will make sure that you get there. The leader might even have a good topic for us to talk about today. And... Yeah, so great point that Keith makes there. This might be, well, this could be a whole other episode. Bad news tone is set by world issues every week. Our small positives will balance things to touch. You know, I'm not a big news watcher. I know about, you know, and, and I, I go back and forth with this. A lot of people think that, especially when you do a daily show or something like this, when, when events in the world dictate, you have to respond to them. We've had this event in Las Vegas here, or, you know, some nut job guy grabs a gun and mows down a bunch of people, and it's bad news. Get it. I agree. Bad news. Do I need to watch it for half an hour every other hour and dwell in it all week long? No. It doesn't help my day. It doesn't it doesn't help me turn around and exude that positivity that Keith is talking about to help balance that. I mean I need to stay in fact it's very uncommon for me to watch the news. I'll watch the local news sometimes to get the weather. But even the weather has turned into this ridiculous thing. I mean, we live, I don't know what the real distance is. Joe, maybe you can tell me, but 150, 200 miles from from the Gulf Coast? And the weatherman here is talking about a hurricane hitting us. It's ridiculous, right? It's sensationalism intended to draw attention, right? I can get unbiased information about the weather myself from a silent website, right? So the point is, if you choose to dwell in those things, they're going to have this bombarding effect to, to push you down, to tamp down your attitude. I can get all the news I need. If it's important, it shows up in my feed. Trust me. Right? I, I can click over and read about it and then move on. I just don't spend all that time in the news. All the news is bad news. I want to make some of my own good news. All right, that's it for today. I dwelled a little bit longer on that, uh, but I hope that, that the, the, our conversation all week has been helpful about how the language uh, affects your outlook and how it can impact, have an impact on the probability that you will um, achieve your outcomes. Yeah, Joe says drama is the heart of news these days. Give me the facts. Yeah. Oh, but for Walter Cronkite to come back and do the news. Hey, you guys have a great weekend. Uh, lots of stuff going on here, so stay tuned. But I'll be back Monday for sure. So stick with me on the on the socials this weekend, Facebook and Instagram. I'll do a little bit of updating there. But I'll be back here Monday morning with another installment of 7 Minutes in the Morning. Be sure and join me then. And hey, remember, if you're in town, if you're in Huntsville, come by and join us for the mob at lunch today. We would love to have you. All right, that's it. I will talk to you on Monday. Take care.